The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 14th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Send me an email and send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any in every ping we all do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a little bit of a mixed bag out there. That's the transports that just turned slightly negative, up 18 points, down about one tenth percent. The Dow is up 42 points, one tenth. A little over one tenth for the S&P, or seven points. 43 points for the NDX. That's a quarter percent. The Russell's up over one percent. That's a 22 point move there. And the semi's up nine tenths percent. They're up 43 points. Uh, you've got gold trading out at 23.58. That's up 15. Silver's trading at 28.74. That's up 30 cents. Natural gas is trading out at 237. That's basically flat. Lights we crude is back about a dollar at 78.13. And the 30-year Treasury print at 116.17. That's up five ticks out there. So let's begin by taking a look at what. Let's begin by taking a look at the daily equity future contracts. We're going to go ahead and shift screens out here, and we're going to first go take a look at the uh, four daily time frame charts. Start with the ES Mini. That's going to be in your upper left-hand side. So what do we know about it? We know that it formed a buy the D point pattern. We've got that identified for you. That has turned into an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That requires a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. We do not have a bearish reversal candle today. The only way we really get one today is price has to tick above yesterday's high. And yesterday's high is 52.64 even Steven. At first, we need to tick above that because we are already below. We've already ticked below yesterday's low. So if we could do that and then the ES mini closes lower, that would be a sell the D point pattern. If we do tick above yesterday's high, that could also trigger bar number eight, just as the NQ does. If you look to your immediate right on the upper row out there, what you'll see is letter D. That's telling us that we have now moved above the prior high out there from two days ago. So this is this perhaps will form bar number eight. I say perhaps because I don't know what the close is going to be. And if we close below bar number four, then the whole pattern gets negated. It will vanish from our screens out there. But because price has ticked above yesterday's high and below yesterday's low, if we do get the NQ that sells off during the day, that would also that would generate a sell the D point top to go along with really the sell to D point top inside the Dow equity future contract that formed yesterday. Yesterday was a key reversal bar out there. So that identifies it as a top. The Russell 2000, two days ago, generated a sell the D point pattern. It's having a nice rally. It's struggling to get over resistance, resistance at the top of its new profile. That number exactly is 2096.30 out there. If price closes above that, it'll negate the uh, sell the D point pattern. And it would suggest that price might run up to the 2114 level. That would be its TD9 count breakdown area. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, there's no TD9 counts out there. 
All right, so that would be, if it does negate that sell the D point, it would need another bearish reversal candle to do the same. But that's not what we're looking at as we speak right now. So you've got potential for a top inside the NQ. You already have tops inside the YM and the Russell. And the ES Mini has got some work to do. So with the ES Mini having some work to do, let's go take a look at its chart patterns out there. So we'll take a look at Stevie's intraday charts. It starts with the daily. So we've already covered the daily. We don't need to cover that any further. What If we take a look at, so first we had that big flush to the downside after the uh, uh, inflate one of the inflation reports uh, came out this morning. What's interesting to note here on my charts is if you look at the 15-minute time frame chart, let me just back this up just a tad here. What you'll see is that that red line is that TD9 count breakout level. So on a 15-minute basis, even though in that 15 minutes, that first 15 minutes, there was a flush to the downside, uh, the candle, the body of the candle is the essence of price. The wicks, the upper and lower shadow, that's nothing more than the emotions, the screaming memes, so to speak, out there. And at the session end of that 15-minute bar, price got back above that breakout level of support. So for the 15-minute time frame, things are still bullish. The same thing can be said about the 30-minute time frame. So let's go ahead and open up at least one of those charts. Let's start with the 15-minute chart. We take a look at a 15-minute time frame chart. The one pattern that I also see out here, because here we need the ES Mini to tick above the high from two days ago. And the question is, is that a possibility? Or how could that happen? So the mere fact that price held that breakout level adds to the idea that that is a possibility. If price closes below that, and certainly on the 30-minute time frame, then I'd say not so much. Now, we take a look and pull the 15-minute time frame chart back. What sticks out is a clear consolidation pattern. We can see we had two different highs that took place. One was at about 10 o'clock in the morning on May the 10th. The second high at that exact same level was on May the 13th at about the same time, right around 930. We take a look at the lows out here. Those are easy to find the consolidation uh, that's down at about the 5232 uh, level. That was about 1145 on May the 10th. And then we had a uh, move down on May 13th uh, down to the uh, 5233 level. So that sets up a consolidation. Now, price should make, it, make its way back to the top of that consolidation. But if it does bust through there, well, that sets up a consolidation measured move. We've seen how uh, uh, natural gas didn't have a bottom pattern but did have a consolidation. It broke out. And guess what? It went ahead and made that measured move. So if the 15-minute time frame chart, you've got Rhodes Mentum indicator tops. If it can close above, this is what you're looking for, it closed above 52.64 on a 15-minute time frame basis, that's us, that sets up a measured move that could get us up to the 52.94 level. Are there any other patterns out here on the intraday charts? Well, there's an A to B equals CD pattern out here. So I've drawn in the A to B point. Let's move that into today's low out there. And we take a look at today's low, voila. Where does this get us back to? About the 52.85-ish level out there. So, um, so, so yes, there's a possibility that we can see the ES Mini. Now, what it's got to do is very clear so the parameters are set out there because there's a consolidation pattern and if we take out the consolidation lows well then what that would be telling us because we could just simply move that pattern let's just move that box down to here and that would be saying we would be making a move down towards the 5203 level out there but what took place this morning on that 30 minute time frame chart 15 minute time frame chart out here is the uh, 30 minute you'll see price came and it was a td9 count that it was also testing and that held support the question now is what will happen when it gets up to resistance, which on the 30-minute basis is 52, 63, and a quarter. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we should go take a look at the NQ as well. The reason is because, as I had mentioned, bar number eight has been triggered. This uh, suggests that we could see a top between today and Thursday inside of the NQ. Is that top right now? That's really the question we should be asking ourselves. And so to answer that question, I think we're going to get that answer really on the two-hour time frame chart. So this two-hour bar that we're in right now, uh, and by the way, that push lower on the two-hour bar was nothing more than a test of support. The profile support at 18.247. We're trading about profile resistance at 18.316. But the real key level is going to be this bar from 10 a.m. on May 10th. And that high out there is a real key area to watch, 18.348 even, Stephen. Why? That set up a Rhodes Bentham indicator top. That was wave number seven top as well as what it looks like to Stevie out there. And if price closes above that as we come into the noon time frame, again, let me give you that number. That number out there is going to be 18,348. That pattern gets negated and suggests we move higher out there. And so then I would have to say, no, there is not a top just yet today. Now, we have a five-hour time frame chart, too, that also has a TD9 count top. Uh, but this bar is not going to complete until 2 p.m. So that's why I went to the uh, two-hour bar, because that's going to complete at noon. If we start trading, whether we close above it or not, if we're still trading above it, let's say, between uh, 12 and, and uh, 2 p.m. out there, that's what I would be watching to try to help us confirm a signal. Now, on top of that, if we look at the real intraday charts down here, we don't have any kind of tops. There's no type of topping signals that I see at the moment. That doesn't mean it hasn't topped. It's just the tools that I use are suggesting that we haven't seen that. So it looks to me like we should see a further rally in the NQ today. And if we do negate those signals out there, maybe that's a rally that extends into tomorrow or even on Thursday. There's a second area for you and I to be watching, and that's the semiconductor index. So let's go take a look at it. And let's look at it via the SOXX. If I could do, where did I put that? I think, I think, did I put that here? No. Um, give me a moment. Well, you don't have any choice, do you? Uh, let me, shoot, I thought I had set this up, but 
Let's do this here. Let me open up the semiconductor charts themselves. So let's take a look at the SOX index out here. So we take a look at the SOX index. The key here, so on a weekly time frame, you've got a TD9 count top. Monthly time frame, erodes momentum indicator top. Nothing on a quarterly basis. But on the daily time frame, and that's what we're going to take a look at. There's actually confirmed, albeit on light volume, if you go take a look at the SOXX ETF, you'll be able to see the same pattern out there, um, which is an A to B equal CD that it appears to be trading in. And this will not complete the SOXX, the, the SOX index, doesn't complete until you get up to about the 4990-ish type area out there. Don't quote me right to the uh, T. But if we were to get up there, then you would at least have a confer a completed one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern, and a bearish reversal signal would then go ahead and confirm a top there. And I think then we'd have a top kind of all over the place. Now, if we take a look at the um, the top eight holdings inside of the semiconductor index, let's do this here. Let's change screens. Hopefully, Stevie can find the right one. Oh boy. Um. It looks like, I can't tell for sure. Shoot, uh, where's that one? That's not helping me out. I think it is this one. So, sorry, but I got four screens and it's really hard to tell. Is that showing folks on your screen? Can you see that on the upper left? Is that looking at NVIDIA? Well, here, I'll, I'll know right away. Let me just open up the chart. If that shows up on there. And the answer would be, yep, it is. Okay. So let's take a look at NVIDIA out here. We take a look at NVIDIA right now. The question is what we're looking at here is a top eight. And what we're looking to see is, is there any kind of topping signals? With regard to NVIDIA, price is trading above its green oscillator and change line at the top of its profile. This is suggesting it may want to go target 932. Do I see a top out there today? I do not inside of NVIDIA. How about uh, AVGO? This is trading into its bearish structured profile. There's no kind of top that I see out here. 1370 is a resistance level. Qualcomm. Qualcomm has an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Let's see if we can draw that. There are several of them, quite frankly. Let's draw in... Well, let's draw in this one here. So this one's going to start from back at about February the 2nd. That's your A point. Oh, shoot, I grabbed the wrong tool. Let's try this again. So let's draw A to B out here. We're just simply going to move this over to that C point, which is about right here. And we're going to see that price has not completed that at all. It's got more to go, maybe up into the 195-ish type area out there. And that is for Qualcomm. Uh, if we take a look at AMD, uh, AMD's got a bottoming pattern, not a topping signal out there. Let's take a look at Micron. Micron could go on to form a TD9 count top. Um, it still needs to tick above yesterday's high out there, much like the ES uh, needs to do that, much like the NQ has already done. So that could trigger something. Um, AMAT looks bullish. It's trading above profile. And it's green oscillator and change. So I'm not going to top eight semiconductor index charts out here are suggesting to Stevie and to you, I believe, that the SOC should go ahead and complete that A to B equal CD pattern to the upside out there. Let's go to our first caller. It is Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing this great, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. And uh, Larry Bird, I believe, is who you are trading out there. Which team are you trading Larry Bird to? <laughs> it is kind of a funny symbol, but, yeah, it's uh, it's all birds. I know you kind of asked what it was the other day. It's, uh, it's actually a shoe company. Oh, okay. I like shoe companies. And the only reason I know anything about it is my wife, you know, has had a, I don't know, she's probably owned them for, I don't know, at least a couple of years. Okay. That's kind of how I found out about it, and then it went public, I don't know, not too long ago, maybe a year or so ago. And, uh, of course, you can see that things got hammered down. So I haven't ever owned it until recently. Okay. When I made those lows. I decided to take a, you know, start a position in it. Uh, the things I did notice about it, if you go back to April 22nd, had a decent volume day, but it went right up and hit the 50-day uh, moving average. Okay. Got rejected there. And then so I guess it was yesterday. It went after it again, but it got above it, closed above it. We're above it again today. So that's positive. Just want to get your thoughts. And I, and I do think it finished off that pattern. The TD count um, it was in question, but I think it pulled it off last week. And so just wanted you to take a look at it. Sure, sure. Happy to. So when we take a look at uh, Bird out here, B I R D, now are those really comfortable shoes? Is that what your wife, is she, is she using them for running, walking? Are they, 
Yeah, they're just a, yeah, they're a fairly light, comfortable shoe, and yeah, just for me, cool. I have to have a very specific shoe. I have a real wide foot, and yes. so I mean, it looks like a you know a swim fin. I don't need any fins when I'm swimming. I just use those things, but I uh, <laughs> I love it. Yes, yeah, for me, it's like I have to have a wide shoe, and for her, yeah, just that shoe, I guess, fits her foot okay, and it, it's comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. No, I'm I'm in your camp too. So uh, when we take a look at Bird, uh, Brent was first referring to that uh, candle session, which was a, a swing point back on the trading day of April 22nd. And the volume there was 3.5 million shares. And yesterday, price was moving into it, was trading into it with a total volume of three point, basically 3.5 million shares, 3.468. Today, we're taking we're trading above its swing point high. In two hours of trading, we've done 1.5 million shares. That says that swing point is going to be taken out with volume, and price should continue to move higher. Brent, when we come back to this break, I'll tell you where that next higher price is likely to be. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side-by-side -side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side-by-side -side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. We're taking like a ticker symbol B I R D. And uh, Brent, if uh, what you're what you'd really love to see this do um, is close above seventy five cents on Friday. I know it's only Tuesday at eleven thirty one in the morning. We're trading above that. We're trading with conviction above a prior swing point on a daily time frame. So I think it's a likely outcome, and that would then suggest that price should run up to ninety five cents. And ninety five cents is the actual weekly uh, TD nine count break down level out there. Um, I like the monthly time frame chart. We are trading above last month's high out there. This could be signaling a road momentum indicator bottom pattern. That suggests over time you could see 250 out there. Now, if I pull the weekly chart back even further, um, there the next TD9 count top is all the way up at about a buck uh, 40 out there. Uh, well, I take that back. I'm sorry. It's actually at a buck eight. It's actually at a buck. 18. So if price can clear 95, then I'd say the next area would be $1.18. So everything looks good on the daily. Everything is looking good on the weekly. Everything is looking good on the monthly. From a day standpoint, number of trade trading days, the upside It's only day number two to the upside. So it's not extended out there. Now, one of the cool things here that you'd be looking for is we can see on all the rally attempts out here, the most recent rally attempts, we've only seen two bar. We've seen mostly two bar rallies. I see two, three bar rallies. This has taken us back, folks, since the beginning of the year. So for, since uh, January 2024 out there. So ideally, Brent, you get four bars out there. And that would be a hint or a signal to you that uh, this would be having a change in trend signal. So, uh, you know, uh, now wouldn't be surprised to see a pullback after tomorrow. I would think you should at least get a three bar move to the upside. But everything looks pretty good when I take a look at Bird. Is there anything else on these charts here that uh, that we should look at together. No, that was great, Steve. I really appreciate it. You, you know, as always, you're very thorough and went through all the different charts as I hoped you would, and so I really appreciate it. Perfect. Just, uh, Perfect. yeah, have yourself a great day and have yourself a great rest of your week. And you, sure you too. And you, soon. you too, and thanks for telling all the dinners about a, a new pair of uh, tennis shoes that they may want to check out, unless you have a wide foot like Brent and Stevie out there. So, uh, Brent, have a uh, terrific Tuesday, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. All right. Let's, you, uh, you bet. You bet. Uh, so we did have a couple of requests that came in yesterday that Stevie didn't get to, so I want to get to start on those right now. And the first one is for Lee B., and uh, Lee wanted to take a look at uranium. You are a, so we open up this chart out here. What we know is we have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top, and that formed on May 7th with that bearish shooting star candle. The following day was a new profile, and price is just trading with inside that, Lee. So you have support in a zone, which is 29.48 to 30.24. And you have a resistance level at 31.77. I'm sorry, 31.75. And then the ultimate resistance level would be the high of that shooting star at 32.50. So you've got a um, consolidation after a top out there. Nothing more to report on that. The weekly time frame looks like uh, that, that didn't even tack that. So the weekly is more bullish than it is bearish. There's no bearish pattern that I have. And price is above profile and a saucer and change line. Now, the good thing about the daily, uh, Lee, is price has basically held that green oscillator and change line. So, um, you know, maybe this is just a small sideways consolidation pattern that's trying to set up on the daily time frame. The monthly, though, that's really the one to watch. Now, it's the one to watch at the end of the month. You do have a TD9 count top. Price is trading into the swing point, which was February of 2024. 66 million shares were traded that month. Last month, you were moving higher with 67 million shares. Uh, so far in the month, we're at uh, 30, 30 million. So that's pretty good. We know about halfway, 60 million. So you're kind of moving in that swing point with volume, but you are trading above profile resistance at 30, 36 and above a green asset and change line. So the monthly, even though it's got a top, is still looking pretty good. It's neutral, not bearish. And the weekly is certainly bullish, and the uh, the daily's got a uh, you know kind of a bearish signal out there, which would only mean something if support was broken, and that'd be below 29.48. So Lee, thanks for waiting an extra day. You also wanted to take a look at NXE out here, so let's pull that set of charts up on our screen and see what NXE is doing. Had a, a terrible day a couple of days ago. This is next gen energy out there. It closed below the bottom of its daily profile. It closed below that for uh, uh, yesterday's 
as well. And today we're trading below that. That tells us we have a profile change in trend. Now, ordinarily, that would sound pretty bad. And it may turn into something bad. But in order for that to happen, we can see that price also on a weekly time frame, which last week was a confirmed Roseman indicator top. And it was a wide ranging bar. We see that. It's only Tuesday, we so we saw that in the daily time frame. But price found support at 714. That was the bottom of its profile. And on the pullback, price found support at screen oscillator and change line on the monthly time frame. So I'm not yet willing to call curtains on NXE. Um, I don't see any daily pattern out here um, worth mentioning. So I say that the, I suggest that the focus should really be on that weekly time frame chart. If price closed below 714, then we had lower, you might say lower to where? I would say 680 because that would be the bottom, I'm sorry, that'd be the center of its monthly profile. And if price would, were to trade below 680, you could be looking at 529. So thank you very much for waiting an extra day when it comes to NXE and hope that that information helped you out. Hector and Patty wanted to take a look at AEM, Ignico Eagle. They were mostly interested in the A to B equal CD pattern on the monthly time frame chart. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We can come back to these charts, but let's go switch panels. Let's go take a look at the A to B, and there's several A to B equals CD patterns on the monthly time frame chart. So let's change our window. This one's easy for me to identify because it's the only one that shows up that's got black screens. Now, when we look at the, uh, oh, that's the socks. Hold on a minute here. There's the SOXX we were taking a look at. So see here, you got the swing point on this. It has volume of 3.5 million shares. Price is passive, but not with volume. So this could be setting up a Tiger Gartley sell pattern in about the 228 level, which would be pretty cool if that were to unfold. But let's go back and take a look at AEM. Let's get those charts up on our screen out here. So it was multiple A to B equals CD patterns inside of the socks. Not the case with regard to Ignico Eagle. So we take a look at Ignico Eagle. You either have a large consolidation. So that's drawn in here. You can see the yellow rectangle. The top of that consolidation is in the 88-ish level. With regard to the most recent A to B equals CD pattern, that's drawn in here. Uh, the B point was the high of the month of May of 2023. Volume there was 62 million shares. When it was passed last month, it was 85 million shares. So Ignico Nico Eagle has a confirmed A to B equal CD pattern. Well, great, Stevie. It already hit the one-to-one -one price objective at 67.69. It most certainly did. And I would say if we were to get a bearish reversal candle, which last month was not a bearish reversal candle, kind of looks like a bearish shooting star, but had too much of a wick on the downside, and it's not a bearish reversal candle. So here, that's what you'd be looking for. As far as this next price objective, in the A to B equal CD folklore language out there, we'd be looking to move up towards that 74.34 level. I am not saying that. That's where Ignico Eagle is going to go to, but that would be its next monthly price target out there. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, you can see it's A to B equals CD. It's the same thing that we're looking at on the monthly time frame as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we've got those uh, charts up here for Nico Eagle up on our screen out here. We can see it negated a TD9 count top. It doesn't have any kind of a topping signal out there. I mean, it's got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, but it has not generated bearish reversal candle. We're uh, bullish on the weekly chart. It negated its TD9 count top. The monthly chart is bullish as well out there. So Nico Eagle looks like it wants to continue to run higher out there. So Patty and Hector, hope that helps you out. And uh, Let's go on to our next request, which is to take a look at ticker symbol UPST for Ray in Sarasota. This is Upstart, I believe, is the uh, uh, name of the uh, company, UPST, Upstart Holding. So on a daily time frame, let me open this up a little bit more, see what we can see out here. Upstart Holdings. Look, you had a profile change in trend yesterday. You're getting confirmation of that. Um, this looks like now this is going to start trading into a gap to the downside. That gap to the downside began on February 14th for Valentine's Day. 28 million shares. So today, so far, you got 5.7 million. Really not too bad. So you got about an 18 million share a day going into 28. I would suggest to you that you should fasten your seatbelts between the price levels of 32.47 and where we're trading right now, which is basically above the 29.60 area. Uh, not that it's a top or anything like that, but just simply that you should see a little bit of bumpy air in that zone. If we look at a weekly time frame chart, what you like about this, Ray, is the fact that price is now trading above 27.94. 27.94 is the top of its weekly profile. That would give you a profile change and trend signal and suggest a further move higher. That further move higher, price is trading with inside its um, monthly profile. Now, monthly profile has got resistance at 3013, and that's next level. If price can get above 3013, that would then suggest to move up towards 4226. So you are looking for support and resistance level, support on the daily 2611. Don't have resistance other than what I gave you, which was basically that gap to the downside. On a, a weekly time frame, resistance, 60.50. Support right now, I'd have to call it 27.94. That's assuming price is able to stay above that level and uh, nothing really to work with on the monthly time frame. So, Ray, thanks for writing in. Always good to hear from you as well, and uh, we'll look forward to your next request. GTE uh, wrote in and would like to take a look at the XPEV, which is a, a China... 
I believe it's a EV company. Makes sense. XP and then EV. And uh, what uh, what GT was insinuating is, I guess there's some tariffs that uh, the Biden administration is uh, considering, or maybe they've already done it, I don't know, applying against uh, China in any of its uh, imports out there. Kind of an interesting thing, isn't it? You got an administration that is gung-ho on uh, going electric, and uh, this is the action they're going to take. But here's what I can share with you, uh, GTE, and that is that it hasn't affected price at all. All you've got here is a consolidation with inside its daily profile. Now, if you saw two consecutive close below 784, that would be signaling to move down to the 695 level. Of course, you've got resistance at 840 out there, and that's about all that I can really share with you on this uh, chart out there. So hope that that helps you out, but it hasn't uh, tanked or anything along those lines. Tanking would require a close below, quite frankly, it would require a close below, not that it can't happen, but it would require a close below $6.55 out there. So hope that helps you out. S&P inside the tiger. Well, I'm going to get through all of the requests that have come in thus far, although I have to check my phone. So maybe if somebody in the den has got something they want me to take a look at, now would be an excellent time to type that symbol in for Stevie to review. But we're going to go take a look at AMD, and this is for S&P. And I think this is perhaps because I had mentioned AMD when we were looking through the semiconductor charts out there. So we take a look at this instrument. This instrument has a uh, road momentum indicator bottom pattern. It confirmed that bottom pattern when uh, price gapped up back on May the 6th. Now, price is still, so you've got a bottom pattern out there. But it's one of those bottom patterns that says, boy, it's got a lot of work to do. This is for the daily time frame. What do you mean, Steve? It's got a lot of work to do. Well, first, it's trading below profile support. And profile support basically is now resistance. And that's in the 159.58, 161.62 level. The good news about AMD is it still is holding on to its oscillator and change line. Now, what you want to watch there, S&P is, in fact, that number, which is approximately 149.10. If price were to close below that level because it's red, that suggests move back towards its swing point. That's a swing point for May 2nd. Volume there of 50 million shares. If it starts pulling down, pulling back with more than 50 million shares, it's probably going to go ahead and take that out and further and move lower, move lower. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, it is troublesome as well uh, uh, out here. And so in, not in the case, so the daily at least has a confirmed bottom. The monthly doesn't. And the monthly is trading below its bullish structure profile. It's been doing that for the last six weeks, five or six weeks out there with no bottom signal. So that could be suggesting price wants to move lower. And on a monthly time frame chart, the good news here is price has held that green oscillator and change line. It does have a sell, the D point top out there. And if price on a monthly basis were to close below 151.16, or thereabouts, that would suggest a further move lower. Its profile levels could take it to 106.54 to 119.96 out there. So how do you watch this? Really watch that daily time frame first. If price closed below 149.09 or thereabouts, that oscillator and change line, that's going to take us below the monthly oscillator and change line, and that's going to suggest that we certainly head lower towards that swing point. So S&P, I hope that helped you out with regard to AMD, and as always, thanks much for the request. Uh, G-Man says, let's take a look at Apple and run. We got nothing but time out here, G-Man, AAPO, which, by the way, I believe Apple is forming a TD9 count top today. It is bar number nine, so you're going to get a TD9 count top that's going to confirm today inside of Apple. It'll complete that pattern tomorrow with price above a green oscillator and change line and above the top of its profile. A further move higher should not be counted out. And when we look at the weekly time frame, it is suggested to move up towards the 189.83 level out there. And the monthly, that was the weekly chart. If I said monthly, I meant weekly. With regard to the monthly chart, price is now starting to trade into its bearish structured sell zone. So I would say if Apple is going to start being sold off again, it happens between today and, well, really, the pattern completes tomorrow. So today to um, Thursday is when we would likely see that selling begin inside of uh, Apple out there. Uh, so thanks for that request. GMAT also wanted to take a look at ticker symbol RUN. So let's pull those up on our screens out there. And we take a look at RUN. What do we have out here? What it's doing today, I'm going to open this chart up. It's taking on its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. That's at 1265. 
We don't have a topping pattern that is in play us out here, just resistance, which has held so far. But what you're watching for here, G-Man, is if pricing close above 1265 and do it for two consecutive sessions, that suggests a further rally. Now, there's resistance not much further up, and that was from the resistance that uh, formed basically on March the 29th. It was the March the 28th. That was the uh, candle that the uh, bearish engulfing engulfed. That sets up resistance up at 1359. So close above 1265 should get you up towards that 1350. You clear 1359. The daily chart says run would be off to the races. Now, the weekly chart would say those races should take us to 1602. And if that's going to happen, well, what we can see here in the case of run, it's been below its oscillator and change line since November of 2021. But yeah, I take that back. There was one month that closed above it, and that was December of 2023, and that was a false breakout message. So you can see price is right up at that critical level out there. Right now, that's at 1268. Price can clear that level, then we should be off to the races inside of ticker symbol RUN. We'll be right back. We're going to take a gold, I believe. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the intraday charts here for gold. This is for uh, one of our denners, Ron, inside the den. So, Ron, you had a nice TD nine count top roach momentum indicator pad that formed a 1010 this morning. Uh, that has now taken price. Uh, it's trading with inside its uh, profile level, so support at 2354.70. Two closes below that would suggest to move down to 2342. Resistance 2360.20. 
two close above that. We get back to this morning's uh, high. I believe that's the high of the morning, which is up at the 23.62.90 level. That's from your 10-minute chart. How about the 15-minute chart? What kind of signal do we have there? I don't know, but let's go ahead and open it up. TD9 count top as well. Price pulling back. It's trading with inside profile support here. Your support levels are down to 23.48. And resistance is what it's taking on as we speak right now. And that's up at the 23.56.90 level. Let's take a look at any other intraday charts that have some kind of signal. 30 minute, 30 minute formed a uh, sell the D point top is what it looks like. This, yeah, can't tell if it did or it didn't. So we won't go there. Um, so I, I'm not going to say anything on the. Uh, well, what I can share with you on the 30 minute chart, 23.42 is a key level of support. That's your TD9 count breakout area so i don't see much other than that well i take that back you got a two hour td nine count top that is likely to complete here at noon is it noon yeah at noon so now that pattern could actually it will confirm at noon it will complete at uh, two so you do have a uh, a signal out there to be paying attention so put that together with your trading vfc charts up should be gold contract oh, i got the gold contract charts that are up on my screen out there I'm not sure what you're looking at, BFC. Uh, oh, can I pop that up there? Yeah, okay. So that's basically all that I see on the um, on the uh, gold charts out there, Ron. So watch that two-hour time frame chart. By the way, price is trading above profile support. So the support level would be 23.53.80 on any kind of pullback for that two-hour time frame out there. So we're just going to go ahead and put the charts up here for VFC. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Now that's going to take us to the end of the show. But folks, stay tuned for all the great programming we have lined up. And I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Take care and be safe out there.